if there's anything you're going to take away from this week's episode of Master Talk, it's this. The quality of your presentation is solely determined by how much your audience loves it, right? Your pitch, no matter what idea you have to share, no matter what topic you have, your audience ultimately determines if your presentation is something that's worth talking about and sharing. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on on this week's episode of Master Talk. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brendan. I am the host of Master Talk, your go to channel to mastering your talk. And today we're focusing on why it's so important to tailor the message that you bring about in presentations directly to your audience. So, in this week's episode, we're mostly going to be focusing on the why. Why is it so important that you do this? And why is that literally the only thing that you should be focusing on before you even talk about the content? And in this short video, through a personal story of mine, we'll understand the why. And then in next week's episode of part two, we'll be going over through a pitch example how exactly to tailor your message to your audience and how to build the presentation around that. So stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's talk about my start of my undergrad and my beginning of university where I was obsessed about my audience and the lessons I learned from that. So when I started university a couple of years ago, I was a pretty confident public speaker. I knew how to pitch in general. I wasn't perfect, but I was good enough that most people would say, oh, he's a pretty good public speaker. But I never understood the importance of my audience until I did my first ever case competition. So for a small backstory, case competition essentially is where you're given a case, so a problem that the company is facing. So let's say McDonald's right now is having a big issue where a lot of health conscious consumers who like to buy salads and healthier choices and organic food don't want to eat at McDonald's anymore because they can get the same fast, convenient meals, but from a healthier standpoint, and they're willing to pay more for it. So let's say the CEO of McDonald's comes to you and he says, okay, um, a lot of consumers are leaving McDonald's to have healthier choices to eat more healthier foods is there any way for us to bring them back that is an example of a case competition mandate so a problem that a company is facing you're there to essentially solve it so you spend three hours creating a powerpoint presentation and you present it to an executive board that could be comprised of professors people from the company and different people on the judging panel that makes sense so during my undergrad i've probably done 30 40 case competitions and my first one is probably the one I'll never forget. So to give you some context, the case was a packaging company. So think about your favorite juice box and the packaging that goes around this juice box. So the client in question was one of the biggest, the world's biggest packaging companies. And they essentially gave us a case on how to bring coffee cream. So you know that cream that you put in your coffee? How do we bring that to the Canadian market, but a non-refrigerated version of that cream? So it's not like the coffee cream that you usually get from uh, Tim Hortons, if you're familiar with that restaurant in the US and Canada, or just a local coffee shop, but rather the same coffee cream that doesn't require refrigeration. So how do we market this to the Canadian customers? That was essentially what the case was about. So we were very eager first years, you know, we were very excited to be there, and we had this interesting idea to create a video commercial. So we said, you know what, to show our enthusiasm for the company, to show that we care, we're gonna create a big commercial about how this company's packaging is so amazing and how this coffee cream product is gonna be great. So we went to a local grocery store, uh, we got a coffee cream, uh, we poured it into a cup of coffee, we made a whole commercial around it. But here's the thing that we realized at the grocery store was the company in question's coffee cream wasn't available yet in store, so we couldn't find it anywhere in the store. So what we did, that we didn't think much of is we just took a competitor's packaging and used that in our commercial instead because we couldn't find what we were looking for, right? So we had to use something. And that ended up being quite an interesting situation. So jumping ahead a bit, maybe 30 days later, we enter the presentation. So we walk in, we're ready, we're suited up, we have our ties in place, we have our suits in, we're excited, we've practiced our presentation. 
and we slowly walked up the classroom. So of course the presentation is at our university and we we take a small glance and we, we look at the judging panel and we see three different people. The first one's a professor at Concordia, so we're not too worried about that. It's a professor, you know, he has some knowledge about the packaging industry, but it's okay. And then the second one was an account executive at the company. So someone who manages accounts, who tries to sell packaging to different um, juice box companies and different coffee companies across Canada. And then we looked to our right and we saw the managing director for the company nationwide. And we were pretty nervous because we were very young at the time and we were pitching one of our first ever case competitions to the guy who pretty much runs the entire operations of the company throughout Canada. Yeah, not the best start to the day. Can't disagree more. Anyways, so, so we get into our pitch. You know, we're presenting, we're super energetic, we have great quotes from the CEO of the company. We're super excited. And you can tell the managing director is very happy, he seems very energetic. Until we get to the commercial at the end. So we play the commercial, you know, very macho like, very happy to be there and presenting this amazing commercial. And we get to the packaging and clear, you know, we see the, the coffee cream being poured into the coffee. And the presentation ends. You know, we're very happy with our commercial. No other team did a commercial. I'm sure we did fine, right? And then we get to the feedback. Then the professor says, you know, the usual great presentation, great energy. Uh, the account executive as well, he says how great we are, how we're, you know, we were able to present at such a young age, he wasn't able to do that, yada, yada, yada. And then the manager and director looks at us and he says, you know, this was a really great presentation. You had some great energy. I loved, you know, what you were doing with this. But why are you using Boom Pack in your commercial? So at this point, we got really confused. What's, first of all, what's Boom Pack? What are you talking about? And he made us rewind the commercial to the, to the frame where we used a competitor packaging. And he pointed to that and he said, with a very sad and disappointed look on his face, that you should have never used that packaging. And we looked at ourselves and, to be quite frank, we were kind of confused. I mean, I mean it's just a packaging at the end of the day, right? I mean, does it really matter? And that's when I had a really rude awakening during the awards ceremony when I when I went ahead and talked to the to the managing director directly, and and I asked him, you know, like what do you think was missing from our presentation? And he looked at, and he looked at us, you know, he looked at me and he looked at the team and he said, you know, you guys had a great presentation, you had a great energy, but there's two key things I would have changed. One, why did you spend so much time telling me about the company and the history behind my company? I've been working there for 25 years. I mean, you don't need to spend time in your presentation telling me that. But the second thing, and the thing I'll never forget from what he said, was this. I've spent my whole life in the packaging industry. You should never show a competitor's packaging. And he still looks sad on his face at the dinner, right? And that's when I realized something very important. Even if I didn't work in the packaging industry for so long, I mean, I was just a first year freshman um, out of university, right? He spent his entire life in the packaging industry. Like from the first day he got out of university until today, he's probably in his 50s now, he spent 20 to 30 years of his life in the packaging industry. That's all he thinks about. And it was at that moment that I learned the most important lessons to presentations, which is the quality of your presentation lives and dies by your audience. If the audience doesn't feel that you've tailored your presentation to them in a way that they'll understand, a way that serves them, then the message won't get through. They'll be confused, they'll wonder why you did certain things, and ultimately your idea falls flat like that right but if you're able to understand the audience right in a way that they that you understand them even better than they understand themselves which is a stretch but if you can get there then your audience will be so enamorated by your presentation that they'll want to give you business they'll share your ideas they'll ultimately be your ambassador for your own ideas and that from that day on I've always been obsessed with my audience so I hope this video was helpful to help you understand exactly the context and why your audience is so key and why you're always going to be at the mercy of them, right? 
And if you enjoyed this video, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button because it'll help me a lot and also to spread the reach of the channel. And don't forget to hit that like button as well. The one thing I want to leave you off on, if there's one teammate at work or at school that isn't convinced of the idea that you should be tailoring your presentation to the audience and only they matter, send them this video so that they could be one step closer to mastering their talk. Take care, everyone. See you next week. Bye.